Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York. This morning we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, or as it is known as the Reign of Christ, uh, on this 26th Sunday after Pentecost and the very last Sunday of our church year calendar. Next Sunday, we will begin the first Sunday of Advent. Um, so, whether you have joined us in person or you are online, please know that however you are able to worship with us, your presence always enriches our time together. Today, even after Israel has experienced the whims and quirks of kings, People still long for a true king to set things right. A king that would bear the title of anointed one or messiah. A king who would be the one like a human being or the son of man. As given dominion in Daniel's vision, Jesus is given all these titles, even though he is nothing like an earthly king at all. Jesus' authority comes from the truth to which he bears witness, and those who recognize the truth and voluntarily listen to him. We look forward to his dominion over all, knowing that his victory will not be violent, because his is the victory of love. I invite you now into a time of reflection for confession and forgiveness, and I invite you to stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning, for you that have hymnals, is hymn number 855, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Hymn number 855, we will be singing stanzas 1, 3, and 4. <laughs>
beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kinship is one that should never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 93 responsibly. I will begin with the odd verses, and you may follow with the even. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure and holiness to fit your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. A reading from Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to be him in glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? 
Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It can be rather difficult for us in modern times to truly understand what living under a monarch really means or feels like. In fact, the title, Christ the King Sunday, is somewhat meaningless to many people, and it can actually be hurtful to others. You see, when kings ruled over the earth, their power was absolute, and their country or countries literally belonged to them. For good or for ill, they ruled without question their word was law. Such monarchs gained their earthly thrones by being born, inheriting the title and the power from their parents. Others earned their status by conquering other countries and taking the title for themselves. Today, we can only know the results of such times and actions with countless people having been conquered, taken from their homes, enslaved, raped, and tortured, some whole groups wiped from the face of the earth. All this just so the king, the emperor, or other ruler could have more, more land and more power. They say that absolute power corrupts absolutely, Unfortunately, this has remained true throughout time. Such was the world into which Jesus was born, a world where the rich and powerful sought even more power and wealth at the expense of the poor and needy. Such was the way of life where Jesus lived and traveled, even as he was teaching about a different way. One that would really shake things up. A way of life that was contrary to everything the people knew. A life that would eventually lead to his death on the cross. For some, today is actually called the Reign of Christ Sunday instead of Christ the King. I'm not entirely sure that this title is any more helpful, but perhaps we can try to understand what it all means. The time and place ruled by a king or queen is called their reign. R-E-I-G-N. It can also refer to the office of a monarch like that of Queen Elizabeth. Of course, today the monarchy in England serves as more of an ambassador than a ruling class, as they once did. So what does the reign of Christ really mean for us? And how is it any different from Christ the King? Martin Luther asked a similar question about Jesus' kingdom or more precisely about the kingdom of God, about which Jesus commands his disciples, including us, to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
Luther wrote his small catechism to teach common folks. So he often asked for us, what is this? Or what does this mean? And then provided an answer. The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may also come to us. The Reverend Dr. David Lowe wrote, I think this means that Jesus is king. Whether we like it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, and whether we attach <coughs> any significance to it or not, that it may even feel like bad news for those of us determined to be a king or a queen ourselves. In other words, determined to do whatever we want, whenever we want, and with whatever we happen to have. Yet, it's also good news if we realize that we're not in control, that we don't have it all together and we don't have to. It's good news if we realize that our lives are filled with such frightening uncertainty that we're always trying to keep it at bay, especially, and perhaps rather ironically, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus through our own overconsumption. Then the word that God is God and we are not, that Jesus is king and that there is something or someone beyond our abilities to create or control, well then, that is incredibly good news. Dr. Lutz points out that the purpose of proclaiming the rule and reign of Christ is not to verbally give some form of allegiance, nor is it to offer some form of submission. You see, Christ, who did not equate equality with God as something to be exploited, was not even remotely interested in making some kind of a power play. Rather, when we confess Jesus as king, we're inviting the reign of Christ. We're praying that Jesus' rule of peace, justice, equity, and equality would come also to us so that we might be a part of it, a part of God's eternal reign. In the gospel for today, the religious leaders who feel threatened by Jesus' teaching have arrested him and brought him before Pilate to be executed. This isn't a trial as we know it. Those under Roman rule didn't allow such trials for social inferiors. Instead, accusations were heard and then punishment was delivered. Give them a fair trial and then we'll hang them as we hear sometimes. Pilate didn't care if Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. His concern was political. Was Jesus a threat to his own authority or that of the emperor? So Pilate asks him, are you the king of the Jews? What have you done to be handed over to me? Jesus' response seems a little cryptic. My kingdom is not from this world. If it was, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But my kingdom is not from here. Then Pilate asks, So you are a king? And Jesus explains, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. 
And finally, a line just past our reading for today, Pilate asks, what is truth? According to Luther Seminary professor Caroline Lewis, Pilate's final question has everything to do with Jesus being king. Because Jesus himself is the truth. His kingdom is not, therefore, about determining the truth, but it is the truth. Jesus' king, Jesus' own kingdom is not a thing at all, but a person. As Lewis describes, Jesus' kingdom was never a place, but a perspective. Never an established rule, but a stated reality of how to live life. It isn't seeking or fighting for power, but rather embodying Jesus' teaching in everything we do. As we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we're praying to see, recognize, and experience something that is already here in the world around us. God is known to us in Jesus, teacher, shepherd, and king, savior, messiah, and Christ, a person in history, a threat to the status quo, a new way of living, and the presence of peace and love for all humankind. The reign of Christ comes to us through many unexpected ways and people, through opportunities to serve in the faces of those in need, the hungry, the sick, the poor, and the imprisoned, through moments of comfort and caring, in the assistance of a stranger, the welcome of a favorite pet, the hug of a loved one, the smile of a child, and the prayer of a friend. The reign of Christ comes to us in the baby Jesus, in a feed box for animals, and as Jesus the man who calls a few simple fishermen to fish for men and for all people. He is the one who heals the sick on the Sabbath, breaks all the rules to care for others, who calls each of us to follow him and do likewise. The reign of Christ is often embodied by simple, ordinary people, a teacher, a doctor, a nurse, a caregiver, a bus driver, a first responder, a parent or grandparent, in you and me, and in countless others throughout the world. Today, as we celebrate Christ, who is a different kind of king, let us remember to share the wonder of his reign with others, participating in it, feeling it made real and actualized in our own lives. And as we prepare to enter the season of Advent, let us remember to pause from time to time so that we can witness and experience the joy that comes from being caught up in and with God's will of peace and love and hope. Today is Jesus Shall Reign. We'll be singing verses 1, 4, and 5, stanzas 1, 4, and 5. It's hymn number 
changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. After the words, God in your mercy, you may respond. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God, you sent Son Jesus to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things that long for their freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for all of your creation. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent Son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of your international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path for the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who are served the well-being of others, especially the ministries in and around our community. Renew them in their good works. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent Son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for members and friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person, and for all who are sick and suffering in any way. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and those we name now, out loud or in our hearts. Join all of our prayers together, uniting us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength. We entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Of course, we're not yet able to hug and shake hands like we would like, um, but we should and can offer a sign of God's peace to others, whether it's a wave and a smile or a text an email, or a card. Let us reach out to others with the love and peace of God for us all. God works in us, through us, and through our giving to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If we need assistance of any kind, Please let Pastor Beck know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let's be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine, and strengthen us to be your body for the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And there are two different times that you can attend. It will be in person at 10.30 a.m. every Thursday during Advent at St. Paul's in Liverpool or at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Um, however you would like to attend, the book is $7, and I do have a couple of them left if you're interested. Also, starting uh, next Sunday, I'll be handing out some Advent calendars as I have in the past. Technically, they're children's Advent calendars, but I kind of like them as well. I think they're good for everybody. Um, so, are there any other announcements? No. Okay. Well, I will just say um, I, I am changing my weekly schedule in office hours. I forgot to write that down. Um, I will be at St. Paul's on Mondays and Thursdays starting in December and here at St. Stephen on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. The reason for that change is because Thursdays I tend to be at St. Paul's for a Bible study and everybody who's a part of the study wants to keep it there because there's a nice comfy big room for us to study in. So um, once again, that would be Mondays and Thursdays at St. Paul's and Tuesdays and Wednesdays here at St. Stephen. I also would like to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you have a safe and happy time with family. I invite you all now to stand as you're able for the blessing. God, the beginning and the end, who has written each of our names in the book of life, bless you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 805, Lead On, O King Eternal. We will be singing all three verses, hymn number 805. <laughs>
led on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.